Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Before I introduce my guest, I want to give a quick shout out to my sponsors at Care of Vitamins. Of all my sponsors, the Care of Vitamin Regime is literally the only one that I've like stuck to over the many, many years. Um, I've just found that it's so incredibly helpful for keeping me regular, keeping my energy levels up. I love the fact that you can just take an easy online quiz and put in all of your sleep specifications, needs, eating habits, exercise, and they customize a package of vitamins just for you, which takes all the guesswork out of getting your vitamins. And if you go to takecareof.com and use my code HOLLY50, you will get 50% off of your first box. All right, so let's introduce our guest. She is a rising star. She's going to be huge very soon. So we can all say that we knew her way back when, and um, I'm fortunate to have worked with her in the past, and we have an upcoming shoot as well, the beautiful Australian bombshell Savannah Bond. Yay, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you here. (laughs) Yeah. So do you remember when we shot for Naughty America like a while back? Yeah, you were like one of the first people that I reached out to. I remember I was like, hey, yes. so I listened to your podcast and I was like, I might just message her. And then you were really nice and you responded. And then, yeah, I think it was like one of my first scenes, like t- t- top five first for wow. sure. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I was so impressed. It always surprises me when people tell me that they listen to my podcast. I just have to say, like, I I just always feel like, I don't know. Um, And then you told me that that was kind of part of, like, what helped you research the industry to decide getting in. Yes, definitely. So I was always listening to the podcast. It was fun. Like, when I would walk, I would listen to, like, a podcast pretty much, like, every other day in Australia. And then, yeah, I just became more and more inspired. I feel like the podcast gives a lot of insight that you wouldn't be able to find anywhere else. And that was, like, yeah, a huge, yeah, reason why I joined. Because I was like, wow, it's not what I think. Or, like, just little things that all the different performers would say. So it was super cool. It's like, a free... Basically, yeah. the world can thank me for bringing Savannah. Yeah, Bond. it's your fault. <laughs> for bringing Savannah Bond into the adult industry. <laughs> yeah. It was Sorry, helpful. I just really want to take all the credit. Yeah, no, you can. You can. <laughs> That's fine with me. <laughs> that is amazing. And now here you are. Mm-hmm. How incredible yeah. is that? Yeah, it's been good. I don't regret it, so you don't have to worry. Good. Nothing bad's going to happen. I'm happy. <laughs> so before we like talk about you, let's talk about my show a little bit more and how it inspired you. I would love to. Um, <laughs> but honestly, like, what were some of the episodes that you felt like really, I don't know, that really stuck with you? Um, well, something that comes to mind is, well, I found it more so fascinating what, um, Romy Rain was saying about what she puts in her bag to bring to set. Mm -hmm. I'm like, just little things like how to douche, like what to put in your enema, like stuff like that. It's like, no one tells you that information before you join and you have no idea. So that was really cool. Um, and then, yeah, like the Angela White one was really good. Obviously, I love how she, um, you know, she like empowers other women and all of that. Um, th- honestly, they're all really amazing in their own way, though. I can't say I have a favorite, but yeah, because everyone's got their own story and they're, yeah. all, they're all really cool. Yeah. You can I mean, relate to it. Yeah. Romy Rain and both Angela are such great examples of like powerful female entrepreneurs in the industry who really like know their thing and have taken their brand and really. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Have you, I know you've worked with Angela White. What was that like? What was it like, like meeting her the first time? Um, well, I met her back when I started very briefly and, um, I was just like at a movie premiere for Spiegler's movie, which was cool. And she was really nice. (laughs) You've seen it, Patreon of the Tarts. Yeah, I'm in it. Oh, yeah, you are. You weren't at the event, but um, that's why I met her. I think I was pregnant. Oh, yeah, you probably would have been. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, and then, yeah, when I got, first got over here last year, um, yeah, we were put together for quite a few scenes. So we've probably shot like five scenes together, which is a lot I would say for like, um, 
two people to be put together that much. Do you think it's because you guys are both Australian? I honestly, I would say so. Yeah. But I'm like, I don't know why else. <laughs> yeah. One can't complain though. Angela Wade is one of the best people you can work with. Yeah. Yeah. It was good to start off with that because, um, just another person to learn from, I guess. She's yeah. a good example. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, she's, she's a great example for us all. I always think about how, um, in fact, she drinks a lot of water. Oh my and god. And I always it's, think about so healthy. Yes. how I need to drink more water. Yeah. Always hydrating. Angela, this is for you. <laughs> she actually texted me like a few weeks ago because I think she listens to the podcast on occasion too. Yeah. And I was talking about how she drinks water all the time and how I need to learn from her. And she said she was drinking water at the time that I said that. And she like kind of laughed and spit it out because like she was literally drinking water. And I was like, and Angela, what's so good about hydration? <laughs> Yeah, it's important. It's It's not a bad thing, that's for sure. So, okay, so you actually... Now, Jules Jordan was the first person who shot you, right? Yeah, he shot my first scene with Manuel, um, and that was a really amazing amazing experience. Um, I met my expectations and more, so that was a really great way to start out. Otherwise, I... I know it could have been different if it was for someone else, that's for sure. Also, yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah, I really feel like that that first experience is so important for people because if you have the right first experience, if you get with the right agent, if you work with the right people, your introduction into the adult industry could be a really positive one and that would like influence you for the rest of your career. But if you get in, you come in in the wrong door because, you know, like every industry, the adult industry's got its shady corners. Like we can't deny that. Yeah. And it's always like, when I hear about girls who are like had a bad first experience, I'm always like, Oh, it could have been so different for you. Yeah, absolutely. I think a big part of it was, um, probably starting at a little bit of a later age, like I was 28. So I was a little bit more mature and like, I really did my research. So that helps. Those are two things that I think are really good points to make. Um, first of all, that you were older though. I also want to be careful about, you know, trying to say that only like older women can enter the adult industry and be successful. I know that there are women like Abella Danger and Sasha Gray who came in at 18 and like made good decisions and did really well. Yeah. Um, Each case is different for sure. Yeah. But I think just in general, you know, like we tend to make better decisions just in life and, and, or we're better at setting boundaries. I think that's really important when we're older. Yeah. Why a little bit wiser. It's Mm -hmm. just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. And then also did your research. Yeah. So many girls don't do their research. Yeah. There's, a lot of stuff that you need to know yeah yeah so besides listening to my podcast which is clearly a wealth of information (laughs) um what other things did you do to like do your research um I read Asa Akira's book I think you already know that as well um both her books which were really cool I love her personality I felt like a lot of stuff that she said in the book was similar to me so that was another thing um and yeah, that was pretty much it. Like I knew I kind of wanted to do it. It was just a matter of how and like where I had to be, which was obviously in a, another country, which was pretty intense. Um, but yeah. So you said that you read also Kira's book and you said that there were similarities that you saw there. What do, what do you mean specifically? Um, so just like the style of like what she likes to shoot, um, little personality things like, just stuff that she likes sexually a lot as well. Um, just so much of the book. But yeah, I really want to meet her one day. That would be awesome. I'm disappointed that she stopped shooting, but I'm really happy for her at the same time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's doing really great. She's like the one person that is not in the industry anymore that if I could, I would bring her back. Yeah. 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 Asa's, yeah. Um, she's, she's great. I love her. Yeah. Um, so... So you, so then were you pretty sexual then like already before coming in? Because I know that like Asa said that, you know, she like wanted to be in porn like from like an early age. A young age. Um, I wasn't as a like, not at like 17, 16 because I would like grow up and I went to a Catholic school um, and I lost my virginity at a later age. I was like just 18. Um, but then from that point on, it, um, it was kind of like I was making out for last time, I guess. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I started stripping. I had a lot of normal jobs, started dancing and 
um, I think that was definitely like a push in the direction of um, porn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you feel like you've made the right choice? Yeah. Yeah. I felt like that from my first scene and it's like, I don't know, I just really love it. Um, Feels like I'm meant to be doing what I'm meant to be doing. So yeah, it's good. What are some of your favorite things about working in the adult industry besides the sex? Um, I would say that I think it's empowering. Like it's amazing to get paid for something that we do that's like natural. Um, it's fun. It's always going to be a different day. Um, different experiences, meeting new people. Um, there's so many things. I pretty much love everything about it. Yeah. Have you had any bad experiences since you started? And you don't have to like name names or be specific. Um, I wouldn't say anything bad per se, but I kind of regret doing any of the family scenes because mm. I don't know, like I, I guess I had to do them to figure out that I didn't want to do them, but I just never really thought too deeply into it. Um, it was like, oh, you're working today. Here's your talent. And then you are, it's like a family scene, but you don't really know like the extent of how far they're going to go in the scene I'm like oh okay but yeah I just don't love um the idea of like working with someone that's supposed to look super young Mm -hmm. it's not why I joined so I felt like if I kept doing that it's not it's not a good idea you want to enjoy it um were they trying to cast you like as the stepmom like seducing yeah daughter kind of thing yeah and then I was told like if I keep doing that then I'll keep getting booked for that so Mm -hmm. I was like I'll just stop Mm because I didn't I didn't like the way it was making me feel. It was weird. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because it's such a popular genre, but it's so, so many popular. performers that I talk to like don't love doing it. Yeah, but they'll just like, do it anyway. When is this over? Yeah, hopefully it stops being a thing. It goes out like the step, <laughs> the stepdaughter thing kind of stopped. Now it's stepson, so I'm sure yeah. it'll change. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I hear you. I actually refused to shoot that at first for like a long time. I was like, I'm not doing this faux set stuff. And then like it got to the point where like those were like the only jobs that I was getting uh, offered. Yeah. And I was like, fine. Um, it was mostly like for Naughty America that I had to shoot that. But oh um, uh, yeah. Yeah. But now that I only shoot for browsers and twisties, they don't ever ask me to do those kinds of scenes anymore. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking mm-hmm. of, I want to talk about our browser scene yeah. coming up because <laughs> it is going to be quite a challenge. And um, let's take a commercial break. Okay. And then when we come back, I'm going to tell you about our upcoming scene. And um, you're going to laugh Perfect because timing. it's, uh, okay. it's going to be interesting. Okay. <laughs> so hang tight, guys. We'll be right back. Mm-hmm. Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve is like the biggest online sex toy retail store. And in fact, they don't just offer sex toys. They also have movies, they have lingerie. They basically have anything sexy that you could be looking for. Now they have an incredible offer. Get 50% off of any one item when you go to adamandeve.com. But that's not where it ends. So not only will you get 50% off any one item, They will also load up 10 free gifts for you on top of that. You will get six free movies, a free mystery pack that includes an item for him and a special toy for her and something we know you'll both enjoy, plus free shipping. Now that's a lot of free stuff, but you can only get this offer if you go to adamandeve.com and use my code HOLLY. That's adameve.com, use code HOLLY, for 50% off of any one item plus 10 free gifts. Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, so Savannah, so we have a shoot for browsers at the end of this month. Yes. Um, it's you and Kaylee Gunner and Charles Dara. Yeah, amazing. And here is the twist. So essentially, we have to braid you and Kylie's hair into each other. Oh my God. So you guys are going to be attached by... Very long braids. Oh, so it's going to be like extra hair attached. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We bought extra I was like, what if I don't? Yeah, Yeah, I know. But even then, like, I'm concerned about the length of the braid 
Because you guys have to do a scene like that the whole time. What if we need to like pee? Like you're going to have to wake to up. Together. Okay, that's fine. We're we're good friends, so that that's that good. helps. You guys are going to become very good friends. <laughs> yeah, best friends. In fact, <laughs> I was like, I was laughing. I was kind of like, I feel like we need like a BTS camera because if like one of you goes to the bathroom, the other one has to go with. And that would be funny. <laughs> It's like being handcuffed to somebody. Yeah. Oh, that's super fun. Yeah. I can't wait. It's something super different. <laughs> it's very different. I am worried about the challenges of like, I mean, because we got to fit Charles in between you guys. Yeah. Because it's a threesome. Yeah. If it was just the two of you, it'd be one thing. Like the moving around. The moving changing around. Positions. Changing a transition. I can see one of you guys getting like your head tugged back. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. <laughs> I'll, I'll enjoy it because it sounds funny. It's Anything going funny. to be pretty <laughs> funny, but hopefully we'll also, I have to admit I'm nervous about it because I mean, I think what kind it's of makes worse me, for you. it's so I much feel. worse for me yeah. because I'm just like, how am I going to make this work? Yeah. Um, and I am also like a worst case scenario kind of person, which I think makes me good at my job because yes. then I try to imagine all the problems I'm going to have and how to fix them ahead of time. Mm. But it also just gives me anxiety because I'm just like, how am I going to make this work? Yeah, oh, we'll be fine, I'm sure. Because there's going to be, like, certain positions that, like, we can't do because you guys are going to be too far apart from each other. Yeah, I know. It's pretty. Because even, like, the length of the extension, however long it is, we lose length because we have to braid each end into each of your hair. Yeah, it want to be really long. Do you have it already, the hair? No, Rosalinda uh, got it. Uh, but she knows the concept, and it's, it's long, it's apparently. Well. I'll but... make it back. Uh, that'll be a fun day. Yeah. It's going to oh, be interesting. Worst case, we can just like cut the hair like during the scene or something. Yeah. I mean, worst case scenario, if the braids become unraveled, then like we'll just, just deal with it. Yeah. But I know that like the whole purpose of the scene is that you guys like remain tied by the hair. Are we like twins or something, you know? Y- yeah. Okay. You're dressed very, you're dressed like twins and your hair is, yeah. So yeah. They're really trying to think of different scenarios. Hey? Yeah. 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 But I mean, it's cool because it's like creative, you know? Yeah, I like that. It's definitely not like a stepmom thing. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> it's going to be very, very artistic and stuff like that, but it is going to be, uh, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, I'm excited. So, besides that one, what has like been maybe the most challenging scene that you've done so far? Challenging? Uh, I don't really feel like challenged when I do my scenes because... I don't know. Yeah, I just don't really feel like it's a challenge. I mean, my first DP and my second one I've only ever done about, yeah, I think it's three. That was like the first and the second time I was a little bit like, oh, like what's it going to be like? Is it going to be really hard to do? Um, So I I guess more so like the anticipation of certain things are a little challenging, but then I've never felt super challenged during, I don't think. So you, you've just been able to like, so your DP went well. Yeah. Yeah. All that sort of stuff I really like. I like shooting the hardcore stuff, um, DPs and like my blow bang. I love those kind of scenes the most. Why do you think that is? Um, I guess cause it's fun and it's, um, it's like a, a gonzo scene. I guess you're not really controlled. It's great when they can just be like, just go do what you want to do naturally. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm pretty like real personality wise. I find it hard to act or like be fake. So I think that's probably why I enjoy it the most cause mm-hmm. it's like more realistic. But do you like having sex with more than one person? Um, I think one-on-one is always the best, but two or like group sex and stuff like that is definitely really fun too. Mm-hmm. But it's not something I'd want every day, but it's it's like to do in porn for sure. Yeah, I like yeah. it. What do you specifically like about like group sex? Do you just like all the attention and all of like the energy there? Yeah, I would say the attention and like having like multiple people there is fun and exciting. Um, but also it's like super creative, like what you can create, like something crazy. And then seeing the finished product is always really super exciting and like how people respond to it. Um, yeah. Do you like to watch your own scenes? Um, not really. I don't really watch them. My scenes like my blow bang and like my DPs I've watched because, um, I don't know. 
I knew that I really enjoyed them. So I wanted to see how they turned out, I guess. But usually I'll watch like some of the scenes that come out, like skip over it. But yeah, it's a little, it can be a bit confronting hearing your own voice um, and just seeing all the angles and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, there is definitely, I mean, really like being a porn performer is very vulnerable. I mean, it's, all of your every part of your body every single angle like yeah. and it's just like you at your most raw yeah exactly I always say that to people they're like you know we do like a photo set usually every scene and a lot of the photos aren't retouched like they're just mm-hmm. there and I'm like oh my god it looks so bad but that is one thing I have like a lot of respect for performance because it's the role and that's there forever like not many people could do that and mm-hmm. be like comfortable yeah and that's the thing too is that like not everybody's a great photographer so the lighting might be kind of shit and yeah it doesn't represent it doesn't represent how you look and yeah. also like you can have a terrible makeup artist yeah yeah they really just look you. worse with the makeup <laughs> yeah i've had that many a times but yeah you just can't take it too seriously yeah no you're absolutely right and it's funny because i've learned from my like very limited experience in front of the camera that i would be such a pain in the ass because i would be like i don't like this fucking makeup artist don't you dare shoot me from that angle like this lighting is terrible because you, know, you know yeah. everything as well yeah that's so funny <laughs> that's why people are like oh i'd love to shoot you i'm like mm, no you wouldn't you really wouldn't because you would Baker taking yeah 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 that makes sense (laughs) who are um some of your favorite brands to work for um so I love um Brazzers Evil Angel Jules Jordan um I like all the others too I feel like there's not much happening in porn right now Mm -hmm. um but yeah they're the three that come to mind for sure well those are kind of like the all the top top ones anyways but yeah. yeah a lot of the smaller ancillary companies have died off and you're also with Spiegler who's probably pretty selective about the jobs that you do yeah there's always a lot of jobs um but it's still yeah I don't know like Jules doesn't shoot that much Evil Angel will shoot but still like it's not like you're gonna get like an Evil Angel shoot once a week type of thing mm-hmm. they're not gonna shoot the same people but then you also have, like, I assume your own OnlyFans, right? Yeah, I shoot for that. I've been shooting for that a little bit more recently, which has been super fun to have, like, control over what I'm doing and mm-hmm. who I'm working with. Um, yeah, I enjoy that. But I still love shooting professionally, so it's like a 50-50 for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's something about, like, showing up to set and not having to worry about, like, producing it and just getting your hair and makeup done. Yeah. Just, like yeah that's exactly right and also I think it's important to still shoot mainstream stuff because like that was like seven months ago they were like oh OnlyFans might be deleted like gotta have other options like personally yeah absolutely and also too like getting in front of those big brands and getting like your face out there just helps drive traffic to your personal content platforms yeah 100 percent yeah um, so you mentioned that you're, you grew up Catholic. Mm-hmm. So how has your family reacted to you getting into the adult industry? Um, so I grew up Catholic and I got baptized and did my communion and went to church a little bit. Um, but it wasn't super serious. Like they didn't like read the Bible and they were like, they were just like regular people, I would say. Um, but they responded to me dancing as a stripper. They were fine with that. Um, and then I slowly kind of talked to my mom about wanting to join the adult industry and she was like, Oh, like, are you sure? But they responded really well. And especially, um, my dad, when he found out he was like, I don't know, he just didn't really ever say much. Um, but I, you know, I told them I was happy and like healthy. So I think they saw that and they're like, well, there's no harm done. And yeah. They saw I was happier than I was in my regular jobs. Mm-hmm. And making more money as well, which is always an added bonus. Yeah. Yeah. Do you um, find that having, like, that financial security has just made you, like, more confident about yourself and your future? And also, like, what are your plans? Like, do you want to do porn for a long time? Do you ever, like, want to get into directing or anything behind the scenes? 
Um, yes, it definitely helps feeling more secure financially, which was always a concern of mine, especially as a dancer, because I was like, I can't work all weekend as a stripper, like forever. Like mm-hmm. that's just not, not a good idea. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas this, it definitely has more longevity, longevity and, um, a lot more options. Um, so I love that financial security. I mean, it's still probably don't want to be shooting till, like forever, but I don't really think about that. I don't think yeah. about it too much. Um, you said you asked another question towards. If you were ever interested in like doing anything else in the adult industry, like moving behind the uh, scenes, directing, um, or anything else, I've always thought about that. Um, I don't really see myself doing that, to be honest. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. Like I kind of just. Um, Go week by week. I'm like, mm-hmm. if I'm enjoying this, just keep doing this and save my money and invest it and all that type of stuff. Yeah, I yeah. think that, that that is key, saving the money and investing because people do come into the adult industry and they make a lot of money and they're like, oh, I'm going to buy every Gucci bag that's out there. And it's Yeah. Like, yeah, you should treat yourself to things that make you happy, but also like save. Yeah. you may not be making this money forever for the rest of your life. Yeah, it's like an athlete. We only have like a certain period and then, yeah, you got to think about that for sure. <laughs> Otherwise, I know you'll be back to working. Though I will say, though, that these days I have found that, like, there is so much more longevity for women that didn't exist 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. I mean, you see these women that are in their 50s. I mean, I interviewed Sexy Vanessa, who's 63, who's still working, and she looks amazing. Yeah. And, like, she's doing great. So. Yeah. That's the thing. That's what gives me comfort. I'm like, it'll always be there. Like, um, you could, there's always a market for everyone and it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like you can be doing that until you're that, that old or whatever. It's, it doesn't matter. I'm like, I can sell my scenes from when I was like 20 something when I'm mm-hmm. 60. Right. Yeah. It's always there. And well, and also too, with like, you know, budding technology and like Unreal Engine and the metaverse, you could also capture yourself exactly how you look now and animate yourself. For oh, no. Oh, yes. That's a thing? Absolutely. Oh, wow. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. No, you can, t- it, it's expensive, but you can do that. Oh my God. Yeah. I have to get the details about that. Yeah, I can, we, we actually, the company that I'm working with, we do stuff like that. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> You could like literally capture yourself as you are now and then you could That's like, so amazing. You yourself could be Scary. doing scenes forever. If you go on YouTube and you search like Keanu Reeves Unreal Engine, um, for the Matrix they they did this. They captured everybody. I forget what it's called. It's a very specific kind of capture and it's very intense and um, you know, they have to get all these different facial expressions and stuff like that. It's not like the regular like volumetric video captures that we do for the metaverse that I'm working on. It's a more intense version because it allows you to reanimate somebody. But if you go on YouTube and search like Unreal Engine, um, uh, Keanu Reeves, you will see an example video of not Keanu Reeves, Keanu Reeves animated talking to YouTube and it looks like it's him, but it's not him. That sounds it's dangerous an animation. as well. Like imagine things they can do. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing though, like whoever captures that of you, yeah, would have to, it's all about, I think, being careful about who owns that capture of you, right? Like if you mm. do it yourself and you own it yourself, yeah, that's one thing. But Keanu obviously signed this over to the Matrix or whoever produced the Matrix. I'm sure there's all kinds of clauses in the contract to safeguard yeah, yeah, it and yeah, everything yeah, like that. But yeah, that have to be, right? Yeah. Yeah. I oh, mean, it's wow, crazy, right? That's the future. <laughs> I'm glad we had some like we missed we're gonna miss some of that song, to be honest yeah. it's too weird um so any performers that you haven't worked with that you're dying to work with um I've been pretty lucky like I it was kind of like when I started how I reached out to you I reached out to Jules um there's people that I've reached out to already that I've worked with that I were kind of on my list that I wanted to work with, like Jada Stevens, um, Phoenix Marie, it's definitely a few more. I just can't remember right now. But um, yeah, I kind of, I already did like kind of did that um, because I was like, that's what I want to do. So why Mm -hmm. not? Um, But there are a few people, like I haven't worked with Johnny Sins yet. I would like to shoot with him. Yeah, 
I have shot with quite a few people that I wanted to shoot with. I always just reach out to them as soon as I'm like, yeah. Pretty sure nobody says no to you. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. Maybe. (laughs) I remember when you reached out to me on Instagram, I was just like, because I do get, you know, to be to be fair, I delete most of my Instagram DMs. I, I don't read most of them. They're pretty crazy. They're I feel just, like they're not as interesting now. Like it's weird. No, it's a lot of spam, um, and it's a lot of like guys wanting to show me their penis. Yeah, and wanting to get into the digital industry. That's most of what my DMs are. Yeah, or like people pretending that they're like hot performers and they're not. It's so obvious. Like, yeah, catfishing yeah. kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I've had people. I've had girls that I know, like reach out to me and like like as a, under a different name and like want to get into the adult industry. Really? And I'm like, yeah. I already shot the real you a few weeks ago. Like mm-hmm. this is not, I know you're not who you say you are. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> come on. <laughs> it's funny how they think it's actually might work. I guess I know what they're getting, gaining from that. Yeah. I mean, I was going to say, cause when you reached out to me, I was like, wow, she's hot. Like, yeah. Like, of course you can work in the adult oh, industry. Are you cool. kidding me? Yeah. Have you run into catfish problems? I know that a lot of people. Yeah. Like if that. you search my name, there's always a lot that are going to come up, but I'm not really one to be like, Oh, like a report report or like, mm-hmm. please report this page. Cause it's, I feel like you can't really stop it. Mm-hmm. And, um, same with Twitter, unless they're like doing serious damage. Like if someone's trying to get money out of someone, I'll report it. But I think it's inevitable for everyone. Mm-hmm. Have you had guys come to you and say, this person was pretending to be you, or I'm talking to you on this other platform and I've given you $5,000, like when are you flying yeah. out to marry me? Yeah, but nothing extreme to the point where it's like someone's got like gotten, like given them a huge amount of money. Just people will be like, oh, this person's trying to um pay me to Skype with you or something Mm -hmm. like that. Nothing too serious yet. Maybe soon. (laughs) I mean, some girls get it like more than others do. They get like the catfishing more. Um, And a lot of times if I'm friends with that person, I'll hear from the people that have been scammed that are still convinced that it was actually like the real person. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell me, like I actually had one guy who emailed, who sent me a DM like it was a while ago saying like, that he was married to Angela White and she was going to quit the industry and (laughs) I needed to like leave her alone. And I was just like, and I was like, I'm shooting Angela next week. Like you're not married to her, dude. Like this is not what's happened. And he was like absolutely convinced. And I was like, I can't, I'm not going to try to convince you because. Yeah. I'm just like, I just dismiss it pretty much immediately. Like what's the point? But it is also sad that like people are using this opportunity to prey on other people's like loneliness and naivety, you know? Yeah. I feel bad for those people, but I feel bad for them. But then I also feel like, come on, yeah, like Get you it really th- think that like this person has created a private account just to talk to you, mm-hmm. and that they've fallen in love with you over like Instagram DMs, and like they want to quit the industry, and if you just send them five thousand dollars, they could like move out to marry you yeah I think they want to believe it's so bad that they're just like oh it could be this could could be yeah I know it's sad but it's also kind of like come on but Mm. I guess ultimately I I (laughs) feel bad for them yeah (laughs) Um, (laughs) speaking of uh men um one question that I get a lot from uh, my listeners and from random DMs on Instagram mm-hmm. is uh, what is advice, what, advice from somebody like you who's experienced in this sexual world, what advice would you give to men on how to please a woman? Like, what do you find that men are often doing wrong? Um, I think that like something I may have noticed with um, other performers that I've chatted about is just like they – maybe like aren't super confident and I think you have to be confident and believe in yourself and then if you act that way it's going to attract what you want if that makes sense Mm -hmm. um but I don't really have like super bad experiences where I'm like oh no like what is that guy doing maybe I have good taste (laughs) I don't know maybe you just like a lot of different things yeah 
No, I like a guy that can like take control and um, like knows what they're doing. But I usually go for guys that are kind of like more experienced. I mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe a little bit of a good judge of character for what I like. That makes sense. You're attracted to men who um, maybe are a little bit more like domineering is not the right word, but yeah, like, like confident experience. and experienced. Yeah. 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 Um, so I don't know what I would say, just be yourself. And, um, I think that's key because you're going to, if you act like you're something that you're not, then it's just fake and it's not going to work and just communicate, try things that you want to try. God, that's, uh, that just reminds me of a story (gasps) with an ex of mine who was British (sighs) and I generally like to be dominated in bed, or at least my younger self did now that I'm older, I'm not so much like that, but and I communicated that to him, and that just wasn't his personality. That just wasn't the you kind can't of guy change them, right? that he was, yeah. right? And so I think he tried to do that, and he called me. <laughs> what did he say? He called. He called me. He's like, "Do you like that? You, you like." You, so you, ins- you saucy wench or something. Oh, like that. yeah. You're like, like, oh, my God, no. Please like, stop. <laughs> this is not the 1600s. You just called me a saucy wench. Like, yeah. Like something really cringy. So like, just just go back to being yourself. Just call me a slutty little bitch. Look at this. Yeah. Saucy wench. What is that <laughs> word? That's so funny. But it was. It was like him trying to be somebody that he wasn't. And I was just like, look, we're just not sexually compatible, which doesn't mean anything about like you as a man and your ability to please. It's just like, we're just not sexually compatible and you're going to be great for somebody else. Yeah. Someone a bit more like vanilla or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So your (laughs) advice would be to be yourself. And if what you're doing isn't right for the woman that you're with, then you're probably better suited to someone else. Yeah. Sounds a little bit harsh, but I think it might be the truth. (laughs) Hey man, sometimes the truth hurts. Yeah, it does. What about penis size? How important is that to you? Um, I would say it is important um, to me, but mostly I think a lot of girls say, you know, it's about how the guy uses it and his whole approach. Um, that's for sure. But, um, yeah, it does, it does matter. But at the same time, you don't have to have like a really huge dick. Like sometimes it's, it's too much. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Would it be, so too much would be like. Like you, if you were in a relationship with like with someone that had like a really really big dick, it might be, I don't know. It's not essential. I would say you don't mm-hmm. have to have that to please a woman. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm pretty versatile. Um, it's interesting because I had a like a neuroscientist um, on my podcast. Oh. I don't know if you listened to the episode, Dr. Nicole Prousey. Is it newer? Um, it's newer. Yeah. Okay, maybe not. And she I- talked about. They did like a scientific study about penis size, right? Because men are just obsessed with this idea. They are. They really are. Yeah. But I guess it's understandable. You know what I mean? Like it's such a part of like culture. Like we talk about like uh, like big dick energy, like uh, small dick energy, like that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, I so, can imagine it would affect them a lot. Yeah, and it's one of those things that like you can't change. Mm-hmm. Like we can get like our boobs done. Yeah, we'll you know put I mean? makeup on. Yeah, or dye like, hair, whatever. Yeah, guys are kind of stuck with what they got. So mm-hmm. like I understand that. But so, anyways, what she did was she made um, molds of different size penises, and they were all like different colors too, so there wouldn't be any bias. And she had women like kind of, you know, have these like mold penises and decide like what they would like. And women actually tended to choose a smaller penis for boyfriend, mm. for the boyfriend. They call it like the, the boyfriend dick versus like a one night stand. So they Isn't would go. interesting? Yeah. They were like, oh, okay. Like this bigger size would be good for like a once in a while, like, you know, treat, but like for an everyday, like boyfriend penis, like that's actually, I'm going to go a little bit smaller than that. Yeah. That makes sense. I can see that. Yeah. Because yeah. you were saying, like, you were, like, an everyday penis. You're, like, you're not into it's, things. Yeah, it's not, a, it's not essential. Yeah. Yeah. Another interesting thing, too, was that um, on a scale of, like, what women found important in men, um, the size of their penis was, like, at the bottom of that scale. Yeah. I like um, personality, personally. I think that's really important. And, like, yeah. someone that can make you laugh. Yeah. Then, I mean, because yeah. their dick's not out 24-7. Yeah, exactly. That's, I mean. It's it's important, but it's not. If it is, they might have a problem. Yeah. 
might be a little much. That sounds like too much. <laughs> too much. <laughs> so what kind of personality do you like then in men? Um, I like someone that's funny, easygoing, uh, not um, jealous. Obviously, that would not work well with me. Um, but yeah, just easygoing and funny and like willing to like do new things, like a little bit adventurous. Someone that can keep things exciting in all as- aspects of the relationship as well. Um, I don't want to get bored. Have you found it challenging to date? Now that you're in the adult industry? Um, well, I've been very focused on work, but it is something that I have noticed. Not that I'm like trying to date at all, but it is more difficult, I would say for sure. It's like a huge, I wouldn't say setback, but it's like a barrier. Like so many people would not want to be with someone that is working in the porn industry, which I can understand. That's fine. Um, so it sucks. For them, but I think um, there's definitely people out there that do accept it. Like some people really, they they might like that their partner does porn, but yeah, I guess that's why a lot of people date inside the industry as well because mm-hmm. we have like an understanding of each other and like that bond that no one really will ever understand. Yeah, no, that's true. And I think also too, when you've been on a porn set enough times, you see how it really like can be a job. And yeah. how, like, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's a physical connection. One hopes there is, right? So that yeah. you have a good scene, but it doesn't necessarily mean there's, like, a, a love, emotional connection. Yeah. I think it can also bring you closer to your partner because it's, like, if you have that support, it's just awesome. And then you have your own world. And, yeah, I think a lot of guys don't realize, oh, girls that it would actually make them want their partner more. That's what I think anyway. Mm, okay, interesting. So it's kind of like, yeah, because then finding somebody who accepts you for who you are would be even more valuable to you because that's harder to find, right? Being yeah. in the industry. Yeah, exactly. Are there any, like, couples in the industry that you look at and you think, like, that's, like, a good... Hmm. <laughs> I don't think there is. There's no one that comes to mind, but I'm sure there are people for sure. I'm trying to think of couples. Like Kieran Lee and his wife seem super cute. Yeah. That little family. They've been together for a long time. They actually, I remember they started dating um, right when I, when I was shoot. I remember when they first started dating. So I have kind of like a cute story about them. So uh. I was shooting Kirsten. Kirsten Price is Kieran's wife. Mm-hmm. Um, I was shooting solos of her. And I noticed that she was like super distracted and she like kept going to her phone to a point where I was kind of like, okay, girl, you got to put that phone down. Like we got to finish our yeah. shoot. And she was like, I know. She's like, I just started dating this new guy and I really like him. And I'm like <sighs> nervous because like we had a date last night and I'm not sure like how it went, but like I really like him. So da, 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 da. And then finally I was like, oh, so like, who is this guy? And she's like, oh, his name's Kieran Lee. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I know Kieran. And I was like, all right, well, you know, hopefully like that'll work out. And then I was, t- I guess I was talking to Kieran like a couple of days later and I was like, yeah, so I work with like your, your new girl, Kirsten Price. And he was like, what? And I was like, yeah, like you're dating, right? He's like, oh, I didn't know she was officially my girlfriend. And I was uh-huh. like, well, I don't know. I mean, you guys were texting a lot that day. And he said that like after that, I think he like talked to her and he was like, oh, so I heard like Holly thinks we're dating. And then like, they kind of were like made it official. You like, made them married. like actually, yeah, yeah, bond together. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to take credit for their relationship or anything like that. Kieran will probably hear this and be like, bollocks, that never happened. Yeah, but probably. That's how I remember it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, he's funny. <laughs> and it's it's great, too, because it really just shows that there's, like, a shoe for every foot, right? Because, like, I'm sure, you know, we all love Kieran, but he's such a little fucker. <laughs> Do you know what he means? Yeah, of course. He's so he mischievous. Knows that. He's yeah. such a pain. In, he knows it. He loves it. That's his character. That's his and that's yeah. like what we love about him. But it's yeah. also like, it's a lot. So like the fact that he, you know, found this wonderful woman. To deal with him. To deal with him. Yeah. <laughs> it is Just funny. Just goes to show they were truly meant to be together. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's actually a really good example though and they yeah. have like three kids together and you know and they have a they have a really good life so mm-hmm. 
I think they're a great proof that it can yeah it can happen. Do you know any other good couples? Um, I mean, I think Manuel and Caden. Oh yeah, you know, they've been together for yeah. a while. I do know that there's a lot of performers who have a significant other off screen that they just don't talk about, and I'm sure that you know yeah people like that too yeah um, you know, and they just like they they have a solid relationship, but they just don't bring them into their workspace, which works for them. Yeah, sometimes private is really good mm -hmm. too. Danny Daniels and her husband Vix, fucking perfect example. Yes. You know, Danny's a good friend of mine. I've known her for a long time. I was a bridesmaid at their wedding. Cute. And um, yeah, I mean, they like absolutely very much in love. Yeah. Um, to the point it's kind of not nauseating and I mean that affectionately but like you guys are so in love it's gross they're both romantically much they're both super romantic yeah that's probably why yeah mm. it's cute but it's it's, cute. it's just it's cute I'm not a very romantic person so yeah me neither I'm just kind of like and then Ew. yeah <laughs> I'm like oh god but yeah bless yeah, them yeah it's lovely to see people who like really vibe on that same level so. yeah it is exactly it's like us finding someone that's just like chill and on the same level too I suppose yeah it's like my best friend or whatever yeah exactly yeah. like for me my husband's not like terribly romantic either so like it works for the both of us yeah like we don't celebrate valentine's day yeah valentine's day is so celebrated here yeah. i didn't notice that i was like wow Every, like i'll go to the nail salon and they'll be like oh do you want love hearts on your nails i'm like no because in australia it's like it's valentine's day but no one really cares but here it's like i know maybe it's because they make lots of money out of it or something it's exactly what i was gonna say yeah america is great um capitalizing on um yeah everything including like people's insecurities i think too oh yeah they'll you do know? anything for like money. oh do you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend you better buy them this otherwise they won't love you yeah everything's like extra they go the extra mile the ads make me laugh the most how it's like, oh, take Advil, but there will be side effects. You will go into a coma. Like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God, I didn't even know that. It's just it's, it's intense. It's so funny because almost everybody I know who's not from America has brought that up at some point or another. So my, side ex, effects. my ex side was effects. from from England and he couldn't believe those ads because, yeah, it's like our. So for those of you who aren't in the U.S., we have these, like the pharmaceutical drug companies are huge here, especially because our insurance is terrible. Yeah. So the, the pharmaceutical <laughs> companies make a lot of money. So they have these like ridiculous ads where they're promoting some pill and, um, and it's like, and then they have, they have to, by law, list all the possible side effects, but they don't really want you to pay attention to those side effects. So <laughs> yeah, they rush over it. So they kind of rush over it. And as they're saying, like, this might cause suicidal thoughts, depression, homicidal thoughts, like hemorrhoids, like all of these horrible things. Yeah. There's like people like running through a pasture laughing, oh, or like yeah, a family yeah. like playing together. Everything's yeah, and everyone's like happy, but in the background, it's like this might cause you to kill yourself, but you should still take it. Yeah, it's yeah, it's very overwhelming. Like even when I've had to take like antibiotics, I'm like, I didn't know that, and then I get in my head about it. I'm like, <laughs> what if this happens? Happens. Then I'm like, oh, it's okay. I have health insurance, but not really because they don't care. You're going to be in the waiting room for like five hours anyway. That's so true. <laughs> in Australia, they like look after you so well. Like, I don't know. That's, that's the, the main difference. I was going to ask you about some of the differences between Australia and the US. So one of them is the medical care. Yeah, that that's huge. Like I don't, it's not that I feel unsafe, but I don't feel I'm like if something happened I would want to go back home plus I hope nothing happens um but that and then you guys have a huge population in California so there's so many people um whereas in Australia I think there's like 28 million in the whole country so and there's like 28 million just in Los Angeles probably yeah yeah so yeah, like the air quality, I noticed that. Just like little random things that you would probably never think about. Mm -hmm. um, what about yeah. the people? What about the like the personality more, difference? Yeah, they're more um, serious, I would say, um, which I don't mind because I'm pretty versatile. I can mm -hmm. get along with anyone really. But yeah, they're a little more serious. Um, but they're also, I, I think the guys are a bit more passionate than Australian mm -hmm. men. That's okay. another thing. Interesting. Yeah. 
Huh. No, is it just because like you're talking mostly about guys that work in the adult industry or have you dated men like Yeah, it could be that. Definitely. Yeah. You have a very specific <laughs> pool of I need American to remember men. that I am in a bubble. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, Australian guys are more laid back and like carefree and yeah, I don't know, maybe maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. I think I need more time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Savannah, thank you so much for coming on. And we're actually going to do a couple of bonus questions from my Patreon members, if you don't mind. Yeah, I would love to. Um, And we're going to do that exclusively for my Patreon members. So if you guys join my Patreon, you'll be able to access these questions and Savannah's answers, of course. Um, But to wrap this interview up, can you tell everybody where they can find you on social media? You can find me on Instagram. My Instagram is the Savannah Bond, and my Twitter is Savannah Bond Triple X. And then the rest, if you just type my name into Google, you'll be able to find what stuff. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. And you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. And like I just mentioned, you can support my podcast and get access to bonus content at patreon.com slash Holly Randall unfiltered. I am also on TikTok oh. and my account is growing slowly, but it's growing. Cute. Um, it's, Holly, <laughs> <laughs> it's Holly Randall unfiltered. So go check me out over there. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>